Hello once again everyone, and welcome back to Wallerstein. And joining me after a long absence is Ryan. Hi Ryan, how you doing? Good. Now, we're going to be going over, now we're officially into the, the sword takings of Wallerstein. So before we were mostly doing actions out on the blade or things of that nature. Um, and last week we did some techniques that involved us closing in a little bit more. This time, it's all about actively taking his sword from him and or disabling it in such a way that we can. So this very first play that we're going to be going over is going to be our, not our first pommel strike, but our first kind of direct pommel strike. And it's also going to make use of what I and those here at the school kind of call the stupid disarm, which is a lot of fun because most times when we grab hold of the sword, right, going to the end of the blade, most times when we grab hold of the sword in regards to fighting an opponent, we tend to grab with an inverted thumb, so that way we can then roll it to the outside, his tip goes down, and I'm significantly safer. However, this disarm uses thumb going up, and we're specifically grabbing between the person's hands. Now, normally, this seems a little bit strange, but the thing about it is that if I get my thumb up, I have just as much control of the sword as he does. He's trying to push it into my head, but I can resist him. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean if I just relax, he'll hit me, but by squeezing in the same way I would normally to push the sword back at him, he won't be able to hit me. Now I can't hit him, but he won't be able to hit me. So basically, I'm going to step up and seize between his hands with my thumb going up. Now, the way I get to this particular position is I'm going to scare him with a winding of the short edge in. Now this time he's not going to push me off to the side. What he's going to do instead is he's going to try and shrink in and firm up to fight me for that middle line. Um, which is a useful thing to do, especially considering what we're going to do using that tool next. But this is a way to prevent that, I personally believe. So what's happening is we come into the scales. Life's great, life's grand, everything's grand in the scales. And I'm going to stick my thumb up as usual and come up with my line. Now as you see, he's raised his blade up to kind of defend himself. I'm going to step up with my left foot, grab hold between his hands, and in this tempo, I have the pommel. Now, Interesting thing, the earlier period depiction shows the pommel happening on this side of the sword. So just like I just did, I've relaxed and I've used this as a shield and then I've struck. The later period depiction, he's striking him on the open side, so that way the sword is held over to here. Now, it could be just trying to put more emphasis onto showing the pommel striking, as in the earlier depiction, it is not as clearly shown, uh, at least where the pommel's making contact. However, uh, so that could be artistic choice. The other thing it could be is that when he's seizing it, he's not just keeping it there, not just using this as a shield, but he is actively wrenching it off to a side, as it is decently likely that once I get to here and I plunge in and I grab, he's going to try and pull his hands away from me, so I might as well move them off to this side, then strike him. I've got as good of a grip. If he pulls back, all I gotta do is just pull it off to the side. His sword now ends up on this side of me, and thus that pummel can happen. Either way is a completely valid um, interpretation. Personally, I find that when it comes to using this, both will happen kind of, you know, 50-50. Uh, depends upon what the person exactly is doing. But without a doubt, the ideal, the smoother of the two actions would be the former one, where what I'll do is from here, I wind in, and I use this as a shield to strike him, because now I also have his sword locked toward my core, which is quite nice, because this pommel may deck him, and that's great, but pommels are fickle things, right? Maybe Ryan has just a head of stone, right? Either way, this first action is great, but now that I've got him on the inside, I can utilize my sword to do things to prevent him from fighting back at all. I could obviously bring it across, I could continue to keep myself safe by bringing this low, I could enter for throws, I can do a lot of things from this position. Versus, if the sword is over here, I can still absolutely strike him, but he has a much better chance of getting away from me. All he really needs to do to escape this sort of grip, especially since he already has two hands and sword, is he just needs to rotate to my left side and push down, yeah, with that tip. That takes my hand away from me, and if he chooses to, he can even strike me in that same tempo. So. Personally, I prefer this one as the ideal. But like I said, in the event that he tries to pull away from me, you might as well wrench it down to the side, and sometimes you will get them much more open and they won't be able to even launch a counterattack. So it's really either one. But what I'm gonna do now is, oh wait, real quick, let's talk about before I actually do it. 
had to make this a little bit more tricky because with my normal hand, right, um, even with a relatively short grip, this is the Regnier either light or short, I can never remember, I can get the majority of my hand between his hands. And if he wasn't wearing uh, his hand protection, I could get my whole hand here, no problem. Heavies make it a little bit different. So it's not that I can't get that grip, I can still, but it's a very small target. And because of the plates interacting with you know, the plates of his protection, I don't have as good of a grip on him. So go ahead and try to push the tip into my face, right? I don't feel very confident in that. I can fight it off, but in the moment, it's not great. So what I recommend is if you want to use this particular play, rather than grabbing between the hands as, unless their sword handle is particularly long, which does occur, right? You're probably better off grabbing very close to the strong using the same opening, which still has the exact same control. If he tries to push the blade into my head, I'm still holding the lever. I'm just above his hands rather than below. In fact, I sometimes have a little bit more control over the tip. Or alternatively, if you can, you can also grab hold of the quillium, right? This gives you a lot of control, but all he has to do is pull straight back and it will probably pop out of my hand. So in general, what I advise is if you can't get your grip in between his hands, go ahead and just walk up and seize hold of the strong of his sword. Um, since the sword is immobilized, you're not in a ton of danger of him cutting you. And furthermore, if you feel he's giving you any pressure, just jerk it down to a side, one side or the other, and that will prevent him from really getting a good slice on you. You know, or fight your swords. You're going to get cut a little bit. But either way, I'm now going to throw on my mask, and we'll show that action a couple times. Okay. And you'll notice, depending upon how things feel, like on that second one especially, I ended up very, very deep next to Ryan. I ended up basically, uh, most of my thigh was behind his. This leads into throws very easily. Strike, then all I need to do is raise my hand across since my leg is mostly behind him. We've talked about that same throw, the collar throw before. It's a really good one. So you do have good wrestling options to follow off of that pommel. And that is an important thing to consider is that pommel strikes, can absolutely kill, but they may not, and you should use it to set up something further if you can, right? But either way, that's the first play, so let's start talking about the second play. Now the second one can kind of be thought of as if he was to succeed. I can't confirm that this is what they're trying to do in, in regards to how they wrote out the codex, but certainly it kind of uses a similar entry. It's just rather than me winding in and winning this time, he's going to be winding in, I'm going to reinforce and then do something with that. So I think it is kind of the inverse of this same situation. But an unfortunately frustrating thing about this particular next play is some sort of glitch has occurred on uh, Wichtenauer where the text associated with this particular play, it was fine, but now it's the copied version of the text below it from the next play. I don't know what's happened, but either way, the text is missing. Now, fortunately, I do remember how this one works, I just cannot quote exact words to you. So until that is fixed, bear that in mind. But what's going to happen is we come into the scales as normal and he is going to now wind up trying to stab me in the face, just like so. Now, rather than pushing him off to a side, as we learned in our very early days of doing this, leads to him having a big opening here, what I'm going to do is in the tempo of that happening, but I'm going to reinforce a little bit. I bring my elbows in and I push a little bit off the center. And that gives me some nice openings that we will be exploiting again later. But for now, we're going to take the nearest one, which is I'm going to take my left hand off and I'm going to reach with an inverted thumb. Now, what I'm gripping here is I am gripping the sword's flat. So my index finger is resting on the flat of his sword. My thumb is resting on the flat of his sword on either side. And as I squeeze my fingers together, the flat remains in my palm. Now, this takeaway is a very common one to see. Um, it occurs in most of the German uh, fencing manuals. The trick is to decide where your pommel goes. So what's going to happen is I'm going to squeeze and I'm going to step up. And depending upon which source you're reading, they may advise you to put your pommel more to this side, directly under his hand, or more um, between, in which case more of my arm is doing the work. But basically what's going to happen is once the swords make contact, I'm going to step up 
go basically into reverse ox, then pull back, which will flop his sword onto my shoulder. Um, I usually refer to this one as, as a scissor takeaway or being in the scissor family. That's an entirely anachronistic thing that I came up with as a good way to describe it. But it is very similar to one of my favorite dagger disarms from uh, Peter Falcon. But either way, here's what this one looks like in completion. We're here, he goes one, reinforce, grab up through, and I'm taking my pommel, I'm going as close to his head as I can, which causes my forearm to go against the flat of his blade. I'm then going to pop it up as high as I can and step back off that same tempo, which leaves me with both points at his head. His sword is resting on my shoulder, and if he chooses to come forward, he has a lot to contend with, right? So we'll switch sides so you can see more of the action here. So we're here, he winds up, reinforce, grab, through. So I'm bringing myself not straight up, but kind of up and over. I make contact. I pop it out and I step back hard. Now, you will find, depending upon who you're fighting, you may have more or less success with this. Um, this is one of those plays that is not meant to be done slowly, and it is also one that you're going to find variation of. So, for example, I have seen um, in Martin Fabian's video on uh, the same techniques we're going over now, which you should watch, it's very, it helped me a lot. Um, they showcase the pommel going between the hands at one point, which, don't get me wrong, that opening is there. The problem is to cause it, right? I would have to push in a little more to get his hands turned slightly more sideways so I can get the pommel up through there, versus if he's going for me a bit more and I don't get him that pressure, that opportunity's not there. The other option you can do, the meaner option, um, and one that I am actually a decent fan of, is rather than striking around, I'm actually going to strike straight at his hands. This one, can cause them to release the blade on reflex, but if they don't, I can just continue to drive up and he can't use his sword, and from there I can work. But generally, if I'm looking to pop the sword out of his hands, I will take this inside root, and I bring my flat of my arm up along his flat, and I pop it out to the side, and I'm using my core as I step back to bring it onto my shoulder. Another important thing to remember about this particular takeaway is the stimulus that's being involved. This is not him fighting me super hard. I'm using the tempo of him trying to stab me in the face. And furthermore, he is doing a thumb transition at the same time. That's a lot of movement for the sword, and I'm just exploiting it. Um, which you will see a little bit more when we do this at, at uh, closer to fast speed. But it is not to be thought of as he whines, we hang out here for a minute, and then I have to muscle it, right? Because as you see... The longer you wait, the more his grip establishes, the less likely you are to actually pop it out of his hand. Versus, if he's in the process of still thinking stab when I move off of this, right? It pops out of his hand a lot better. Though in that case, I completely failed to grab my own blade and whack myself in the head, which is why I wear my scrum cap. But, either way, let's show that again. Here, there it is, and it pops out. It does require a decent amount of dexterity, and this is one of those takeaways that I would say, even though it appears a lot, isn't necessarily one that I'd recommend in a life or death. This is meant to be something flashy. It's meant to be something that shows, I mean, it's a very obvious showcase when I step back. I've got both swords in the same guard. It's aesthetically pleasing, right? But you can still pull it off. So I'm going to throw on my mask so I don't get dunked in the head again. And Ryan's going to try to stab me a couple times, and I will do my best to catch this. Uh, as a note, heavies don't really change this at all. Uh, the play still works exactly the same. The only thing is that in regards to the option I showed where I bring the pommel more underneath his wrist, it's a little bit easier when I have heavies on because I'm not crushing my own hand. But either way, let me throw on my mask and we'll give it a go. Step back just a little bit so we're a bit more framed. Okay. Right about there. And then one more, we'll switch sides. And you see how even if I don't necessarily get the grip, I can still make it work. I can still pop the sword out of his hand. Just you will probably get more slices on your body. But either way, you are. 
that's really our, fir our, our two uh, first official sword takings. Like I said, uh, the pommel absolutely works and you should go for it. I just recommend you grab the strong rather than between the hands if you can't uh, get that grip of heavies. This guy, really flashy to pull off. Um, takes practice though, and even if you have practice, you still might mess up like I do. But either way, that'll be the first two sword takings. We've got some more sword takings to come. And uh, one of them will use a very familiar motion like this. Uh, an important thing, if you are watching a couple different Wallerstein vids, is that, like I said, Martin Fabian's video helped me a lot in interpreting these for my own personal interpretation. He changes the order at this point. He puts the two pommels together, then the two sword takings more together, which I don't blame him for doing. Uh, the source kind of seems to sprinkle them in the semi-random order when it would make more sense to put things that are similar right after each other. But that's not what the... Um, which now ordering is, and so I'm operating off of that. So just bear that in mind. Personally, I would have liked to lump them together that way, but I'm trying to make it so if you're following the Wix now, you're just right next to it. But either way, thank you very much, Ryan. And we shall go over some other Wallerstein things another time.